Thanks a lot. Welcome again to the Open Seats uh, OLS 8 cohort. So it's OLS 8 with the eighth cohort of Open Seats. Um, we are so happy to have you there. Um, welcome to the week two. So it's our first group cohort call today. Yeah, last week you should uh, you probably have already a meeting with your mentor, and I really hope that everything went well for that. Um, forgot to introduce myself. So I'm Berenice Batu. I'm one of the director of OLS together with you here in the rooms. And we are two other directors, but there is a bigger team behind and we will show you quickly after that. Um, so this call is being recorded and transcribed, as I mentioned. And there is a code of conduct and community participation guidelines that you can find on the layer, line 84 currently in the upper parts. Um, so if you experience, I, we really recommend you to look at that, at this code of conduct and get familiar with it, because it's this code of conduct will be used for every calls and every interaction that you will have during the, uh, within this community. So if you experience or witness any unacceptable behaviors or you have any concerns, please report to, to the organizers that you can reach at teams at um, weareoils.org. So I'm changing on the time. So we, we are changing. Uh, yeah. Um, and if you want to report uh, any issue that involves one of the organizers, so either um, you, Paz, Amy, Malvika, or me, feel free to reach to members individually. So you have all the email addresses of all our email addresses on line 86. Feel free to reach to us. During the calls uh, today, but any court call that will happen, we will always have some breakout rooms to have some more informal discussion between uh, you and to uh, help you building uh, communities within the cohort uh, and allow you more time to, for speaking. Um, and these breakout rooms will be either speaking or writing. So you can, you may have preference of being able to speak during these breakout rooms or you prefer to just write in the chat. So please edit your names in Zoom to add uh, uh, before your names, W, if you want to prefer to, uh, to be put in breakout rooms, um, more right, written breakout rooms, and S, if you prefer spoken discussion breakout rooms. Uh, that will help us to uh, help us to to assign you to the breakout of your of your of your choice. So even if you are okay with both, we really ask you to choose one. So I will do it quickly right now to modify my name if I figure out how to do it because I edit my view and I cannot find my name right now. So participant and mute, rename. And I would say that I prefer being in a spoken breakout room. So I added the S minus and my name there. So you have, I can see, uh, I can put in a, a spoken breakout room. So please, I ask you all to do that, to just take two, one minute to do that quickly. So I see a lot, so people are doing it. Thanks a lot. Assist is some things without. We, I will ask you again when we have the breakout room. Oh, but the best would be to do that now because otherwise it would be really hard to put you in breakout rooms while we are preparing them. So please, um, I see that um, Elisa, you don't have her, your name, uh, S or W um, matches. I have no idea how to pronounce your name, sorry. Um, Anna Bajlo also, and Eduarda, please, uh, it would be nice if you can put that, your WRS. Let me, um... Okay. Um, and starting now on, we will do a quick lightning round table. So each of you will have to give four keywords. 
no more because we will not have the time otherwise to go through everything we want to cover today. So only four keywords. What is your name? Where are you located? What is your project name? And what is your most recent hobby? It can be anything, any hobby. Um, and I will follow the roll call. So please be sure that your name is in the roll call starting on line uh, four zero, that your name is listed there. And I will follow you. I, you, you are the first one. Okay, and this is where I admit I wasn't paying attention and I can't remember which four words it was. Panic, panic. Name, panic. location, project, and uh, OB. Okay, right. Okay, name, yo, uh, location, Cambridge, UK, project, uh, OLS. Uh, so <laughs> it's, my, it's my day job. I also have my five the next week. Wait, you said only four words. And hobby, uh, knitting. Thanks. Uh, me next. So, Berenice, uh, I'm located currently in Clermont-Ferrand in the middle of France. Uh, my project OLS also. The recent hobby, swimming, let's say that. Um, Lena, you are next. Hi, uh, Lena, location, uh, I'm sorry, uh, for University of Amsterdam, uh, project uh, open uh, guidelines uh, uh, infrastructure for a uh, few Amsterdam and uh, hobby climbing. Thanks. Uh, the next one is Robert. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm from Berlin in Germany. Uh, my project is called Open Tacker. And my recent hobby are my two kids. So that consumes a lot of time. I feel you, really. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Virginia? Hi, everyone. My name is Virginia. I'm from Argentina, although I'm currently at Bristol in the United Kingdom. I'm here representing a group, actually, that we have a project in common called Red Hikmar. And I actually like walking outside. <laughs> Thanks. Tori? Yeah. Hi, I'm Tori. I'm from the University of Amsterdam. Uh, our project is PyOrb, is an orbital analysis tool in chemistry. And my hobby is gardening. Thank you. Eduarda? Hello, I'm Eduarda. I'm uh, originally from Brazil, but I'm now based in Bordeaux. So I guess not that far from Clermont-Ferrand, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm representing my group as well. So we are doing an open science guidebook for neuroscientists from the VUMC in Amsterdam. And hobby-wise, I would say it's uh, cooking and listening to pod podcasts. Thank you. Stevan? Steven? Oh, sorry, Steven. Uh, yes, so my name is Steven. Uh, I'm with the Free University Amsterdam also. Um, and I'm also working on the Pyro pro project with Dorian Juman. Uh, my hobbies are uh, general ball sports, I guess. Thank you. Next one is Matt uh, Human. Sorry. Oh yeah, well, same for me. Also Amsterdam, also Pi Orb, and for me, uh, baking. I think recently. Thanks. Sounds good. A uh, lot of cooking, and I, uh, it's make me hungry. Sorry, um, Matis. I have no idea how to pro if I pronounce it correctly. Sorry. It's Matthijs. Matthijs. Oh, Matthijs. okay. <laughs> I could uh, I could have pronounced it correctly from the first time. Sorry. Go. No problem. Uh, so Matthijs, uh, also located at the Vrije Universiteit in Amsterdam. Uh, my project is uh, um, open tools for research uh, intelligence, uh, and my mo my uh, hobby is uh, running. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Uh, Jan Kay? Kay? I'm not sure. Sorry. Hi there. Hi, everyone. I'm Jan Kay. Uh, so, based in Cambridge, UK, uh, close enough to Yo, I think. Uh, my project, I'm working in a team with two of the folks who aren't here today, uh, Sibeli and Yuzi. But our project is on building a search for open DNA repository for uh, sharing DNA collections uh, in a fair way. Sorry, that's definitely not four words. Um, what was that? Uh, name, location, uh, project, and a hobby like Lena and like climbing. Thanks. 
Antonis. Yeah, my name is Antonis. I'm located in Amsterdam. Uh, my project is about uh, uh, creating a Giga psychology database. And my latest hobby is Lindy Hop and swing dance. Thanks. Anna Badru. Oh, no, Badru, sorry. Can you hear us? Okay. Then I will go for the next one. If we can come back later to you, if you want. Elisa? My name is Elisa. I'm also located at uh, VU Amsterdam. Uh, my project is open uh, source handbooks infrastructure at VU Amsterdam with Lena and Jolien. Uh, and my hobby is swimming, I guess. Thanks. Uh, Jolien? Hi, everyone. My name is Jolien. I'm also at VU Amsterdam. Um, and working with Lena and Elisa on the open source uh, handbooks infrastructure. Um, hobbies, no hobbies, too, raising two little children at the moment. A really pretty good excuse. I know that one. I use that one also. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Uma? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Uma. i living in Kano, Nigeria. I can say it in wireless. And uh, what I enjoy the most is playing football. Thank you. Ruben? Hi, uh, so I'm, my name is Ruben. I'm uh, located at the uh, Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam and I share the project Open RI Tools with uh, Matthijs and Max, uh, who couldn't be here today. And my most recent hobby is, is, is coding. Good, thanks. Um, then I have Fatma. Um, hello, um, I'm Fatma, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, my project is on prediction of um, pathogenic microbes in coconuts in Kenyan coast. And my hobbies are cooking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then I have Pauline. Pauline, can you hear us? OK. No, then I have uh, Laurel, yeah. but I think, yeah. yeah. Anna Badjo has just noticed. Yeah, so Anna, Anna Badjo, um, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Mosulat. I am from Nigeria. Oh, my project is Molar Health, an electronic health um, application for um, people in Nigeria, and I'm obsessed with dancing. Okay, thanks. Then I have some names. I think I have there is some name that I didn't call like Laurel. I think you didn't go. Okay. Hi, I'm Laurel. I'm based in Cordoba, Argentina. It's really early here. Uh, our project is uh, Metadocencia's Governance 2.0. And here on behalf of the team. And my most recent hobby is reading literature. Thanks, good. And I have uh, Ashikbu Nwakaigo. I'm sorry, I completely mispronounced uh, your name. Sorry for that. Okay, I'm um, Ashikbu Nwakaigo Gloria. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a lecturer at uh, Michael Obama University of Agriculture, Umudike. But presently, I'm in Malaysia for my PhD studies in agricultural extension. Then my project is on sustainable agricultural practices and climate change mitigation through digitalization. And my hobby, I, and I love tourism traveling. Thank you. Good, thanks. Did I miss anyone? Nope, nobody is raising their hand. So I assume that everything is fine. Um, so now you, the floor is yours. 
Excellent. Thanks, folks, for those amazing introductions. I always love this part, and we actually managed to get through it pretty fast, which is impressive. <laughs> so I'm just going to share my screen um, and tell you a bit about what we are going to be doing here. Uh, of course, I'm on the last slide because I was just reviewing them. Right, got the right slide up. And there it is. Um, not one. All right, do you see what I hope you see? Perfect. Okay, so welcome, bonjour, hola, shalom. Um, there's just as many as I can manage right now. <laughs> there's probably some more if I thought about it, but I'm so happy that we have you here today. Um, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the Open Seeds program. Um, and then there'll be, uh, if there's any questions at the end, feel free or feel free to put them in the chat or the etherpad while I'm talking as well. Uh, so first of all, why are we doing this? Why are you here? You probably have something of an idea because you're actually here and you've applied and you've put the effort in to get this far. Um, but we strongly believe that science advances best when we work with each other. Um, there's a great saying, um, I know it's attributed to Isaac Newton about building on the shoulders of giants or standing on the shoulders of giants um, but I've also seen it earlier it's a really interesting phrase if you ever look it up on the Wikipedia um, but yeah sh sharing work with each other we believe is the way to make things strongest and most effective um, but it's not always as easy as it might seem um, so a lot of culture may say you know what if I get scooped when I share my work or why do I have to do this? I never had to do this before. There are many different reasons why someone might be cautious. Um, or perhaps one of the most realistic ones is, what if I'm wrong? Um, and so we wanna try and help uh, break down as many of those barriers as we can to work towards culture change that helps people actually share their work very effectively um, and intentionally. Um, I think one of the worst things that can happen or maybe a very realistic scenario is uh, maybe you don't have any bad intent, but you leave your work and all of your uh, you know you leave move to a new job and the hard drive that had your data on gets wiped and that's it that was your research that's done and we'd much rather work towards a future where we're sharing what we're doing so that others can benefit from it uh, so the question then becomes how do we work openly without becoming vulnerable and that's what this program is about talking about ways to make sure that when we're sharing we're sharing responsibly we're sharing safely and we're sharing effectively as well um, so Open Seeds, it's a program for people who are interested in applying open principles in their work, uh, and, but not only just doing it to your work, but also generally in, um, in your community with people around you, being able to talk about open science in a sensible, smart uh, way to be an ambassador and maybe spread that. Um, and so we say open science a lot, but when I say this phrase, I mean any kind of research or scholarship um, whether it's from physics, whether it's from linguistics, whether it's archaeology, or maybe you're an independent researcher. Um, so the program that you're in, we are now in week two of the 16 week program, and you should hopefully already have uh, been assigned a mentor. Um, then um, if you haven't actually made contact with your mentor yet, please let us know. We want to help you out if anything hasn't gone quite as planned. Um, and so every other week, roughly, you'll meet with a mentor. And then we have training um, cohort calls most weeks. We used to say every other week, but I think it's more honest to say that m many weeks we have cohort calls now. Um, and the idea behind applying with a project is that when you learn something, you can apply it directly to that project uh, so that you actually get the hands hands on practice ab about the concepts that we're learning about. So far, we've had seven cohorts. You are number eight, and I could not be prouder um, of how long we've been running and managing this. Um, over 300 people have been through the training program, over 120 mentors, um, and then we have experts where, where we recommend to people that you invite a person to discuss um, some particular matter of their expertise that's relevant to your project. And you can see that people actually, they they flit between these. So very often, once you've been a participant, you might uh, later become a mentor or an expert. But it's not only one way. Mentors sometimes become participants or become experts. Um, 
And actually, if you have the flowing graph through all of the OLSs, I think it gets a bit like a, a bowl of spaghetti, but it's very interesting to see people weaving their path through as they participate in different ways, depending on their time and their availability. Um, and so where we come from is that we, um, there used to be another program called Mozilla Open Leaders, uh, which myself, Bernice, um, Emmy, and um, Malvika all participated in, in various iterations. And that was kind of born from a tech-related movement, uh, Mozilla as in Firefox for browser, you may know. Um, but they were very, very good at training people to work openly and collaboratively online. And when they wound up their program, uh, they helped people launch related programs. And we were one of those. So we, we do occasionally reflect on the open leadership framework from Mozilla and some of the different ways that um, some of the different ways that you can apply it to your work and share your work openly. Um, and this is one of the key phrases that you see from the open leadership framework, which is that open leaders, leaders design, build and empower their projects uh, to help people understand, uh, to help the work be shared and to make the projects uh, participatory and inclusive. So we'll explore lots of different concepts related to open research. Um, and the reason that we're 16 weeks is so that you can actually really get those embedded and apply them one by one. Um, and sometimes you might think, oh, that one doesn't make sense. And you'll talk with your mentor and they'll explain how it does work. Or maybe they'll say, yeah, for, for your project, this one isn't one, uh, something that you necessarily need to apply so much. Um, so this is an overview of the different calls that we have. Um, we have in blue towards the bottom, the mentor mentee uh, meetings that we have. Uh, in the green, there's the standard cohort calls where we have topics like the open science garden, um, where there's various different open science topics. We talk about community management on week six and 14 in different ways. And each time we have two or three guest speakers in all of the calls after the early um, introductory calls. Um, and then we also have what we call the skill up calls which are at the very bottom in a sort of semi pinky red color. Uh, where we offer extra things that aren't mandatory, but are often very, very useful, like GitHub tutorials. Um, even if you don't actually write code, we find that GitHub is a nice platform to collaborate on. Um, and then various other topics as well. And this is all on the OLS 8 website. Uh, so you can see that and you can um, look at the schedule yourself. And we have a huge and amazing team. Um, super proud to be working with all these people. The first four along the top, these are the OLS directors. Uh, Paz Bernaldo, you've almost certainly gotten many emails. Um, she, she's our cohort coordinator. And then we have other staff working in various different roles, either project specific roles, uh, web developers, resident fellows, finance. Um, and very, very soon, Irene Ramos on the bottom right will be joining to be our NASA cohort coordinator for when we run our NASA training next year. Um, and actually, there's 500 people. Maybe you've mentored, maybe you facilitated a call like Umar is today going to be uh, helping us facilitate the call. Uh, maybe you were um, a graduate, uh, maybe something else. And we're super, super proud of our community. You're now one. <laughs> really glad to have you here um so with hopefully with your leadership and vision we will be able to achieve po positive culture change in the communities that we work in so that we can work together openly responsibly safely and inclusively <sighs> need a break to breathe thank you yo um if you have any questions or any comments please add them or oh, uh, online I forgot to say that before you give your presentation, but on the other part, so there is some notes and some feedback already given starting on line one, one, zero, and there is space for questions if you want, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask or so. Um, otherwise, we can move to the next sections, which would be uh, breakout rooms. Uma, can you go? For introducing about breakout. Okay. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> so I think uh, this is our first breakout room for this uh, cohort. Uh, so a little bit of introduction. So some of you might like to be in speaking rooms, and uh, some others are going to like written 
And uh, so if you are okay, just like uh, Berenice has uh, stated in the beginning of the call, call uh, that uh, you should indicate uh, in your Zoom meeting. And for this one is uh, open leadership and open science. You will have like uh, three people per room and it will take uh, roughly 10 minutes. And uh, after that, we'll be getting everyone back in the room. And uh, if you need assistance in your breakout room, uh, please uh, click on the ask help so that anyone from the main room could uh, pop in and uh, help you with it. So thanks. I already assigned everybody except two person that didn't put their names. So I will open the rooms and so they will can also, they can. Sorry, there is another thing. There is another thing that I would like to add. Hello, can you hear me? That's right. Yeah, yes. Uh, and the discussions in the breakout rooms are, are in the, on the upper part. Uh, what was your path to this program? Uh, how did you get into working open? And uh, how has uh, working open affected your leadership? And uh, you can take the notes of the breakout rooms that you are in, like uh, share the experience and uh, these questions. Yeah, that's all. Okay, I open the room now. You should get a notification asking you to join the room. If something is not correct, let us know. So you can stay a bit longer and asking us. Pauline and Nils, I couldn't put you in a room, so let me know which rooms you would pre prefer to be assigned. Um, spoken is fine. Okay, I'll put you in a spoken. Uh, where are you? Pauline, can you hear us? Okay, we hope you had good breakouts, folks. Uh, so next up, we have Berenice. She's going to be introducing uh, some tooling for project design. And wow, you're on fire. Take it away. Looks good. Berenice, you're muted. Yeah, I was muted and I couldn't find my screen. So all good. Everything is fine. Um, Let's now starting, that would be just a really quick introduction. So this topic, so we had an introduction to uh, OpenSeed and now the second part of the, of the call is about tooling for uh, project design. Um, and so we are uh, in the first part of, of the, so the third core call year. And the idea of tooling for project design is to help you clarify, communicate your project ID, the purpose and the goal of your project in a way that invite and encourage participation from your community. So the objective of that is that you uh, know about, uh, at the end of the sessions, you are able to identify the tools that can help you to design your project in a way that newcomers can under quickly understand what is your project about, how they can be involved, and where the work, uh, the direction of the work. You will learn about Open Canvas, and you will be able to fill the Open Canvas for your project to help developing a minimal uh, variable product and make and post a roadmap for your project with milestone task and description. So the idea of this uh, topic, you will have two talks today, open canvas and road mappings, and assignment that you will have to do, or at least we uh, recommend you to do. You don't have to do them, we just recommend you to do them to apply the concept that we will teach you today. Um, if you are interested, so there will be two talks today, but similar talks were given in previous cohorts, so you can find all the links in this OpenSeed video library it's on the website. Uh, it's on uh, weareols.org slash library, um, and you will find all the video libraries of previous talks from, for, from previous cohort for all the talks there, so uh, that year. And I'm done with that one, and I'll stop sharing. Yep.
And that was really quick introduction to, to the transition to the topics. And then I end over to you to introduce about Open Canvas. Thank you so much. Uh, so opening this one up. And while you is present is preparing, uh, if you have questions or notes to, to to questions for the open canvas and notes uh, starting, you can uh, ask them starting online. Oh, two, four, three uh, on the etherpad. Thank you. Thank you, Berenice. Uh, so I'm going to be introducing the first of the two files that uh, Berenice mentioned that are useful tooling for project design. Uh, so this one we call the Open Canvas. This is one that we have uh, brought, brought, brought through from that Mozilla program that we mentioned earlier. Um, hence why we will briefly reflect on the um, recurring and favorite statement we have about open leaders designing, building and empowering. Um, their projects and communities to understand, share, and help people participate and uh, feel included in the work. Uh, so Lean Canvas um, is a tool intended more, I think, for businesses uh, to clarify project ideas and help people think strategically about the goals, about what they're doing. Um, so at some points, it might feel a bit like form filling, um, but it tends to be an exercise that prompts you to think about things you may not have thought about in the past. Um, and this isn't the Lean Canvas, but it's based on the Lean Canvas. And the Open Canvas sort of prompts you more to think about making sure that the community is involved and that volunteers uh, are involved as well, um, or people from around you in the community, since one of the key principles of working openly is being involved with the people around you. Uh, so this is the canvas that we've just been talking about. Um, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of boxes. Um, and I'm just going to quickly. Yeah, OK, right. There's a big, long walkthrough. I don't always go through the walkthrough. I sometimes find it easier just to work off this slide here. Um, so we'll start at the top left. Um, and you probably the reason that you have a project is because there's some sort of problem that you want to address. So usually this one is straightforward. Um, to say, here's the problem, here's what I'm working on, here's why. Um, and the solution is the project itself, the thing that you're doing to address the problem. Um, moving down from solution, there's key metrics. Um, I wouldn't, I don't always worry too much about this one, um, but the idea is how do you know if what you're doing is being successful and making a difference or not? Uh, but I'm also super wary about metrics because sometimes it's too easy to make something that's intended to measure something become the goal itself. Um, for example, papers as a scientist, when actually science is science and papers are papers and they may or may not reflect one another properly as, me as merit. Um, but now you've thought about what, what you're working on, you've thought about what you're doing to improve the problem. Uh, what do you need to get there? And that's the um, area in the green box at the bottom, resources required. Um, and depending on what you're working on, it might be that you need reagents, or it might be that you need computers, or it might be that you need 100 people to read and weigh in on something that you're working on. Um, and if you're working with other people, then suddenly we say, okay, who are these people going to be? And that's where we look at the contributor profiles um, moving to the right. Um, just hovering over that with my mouse, if you can see that. Um, and this might be um, a scenario where you have one type of contributor, or it might be that you have more than one type of contributor. Um, so if I was to think about this for OLS, just walking through, the problem would be, uh, maybe that we'd like to see more people sharing their work openly and the solution, give people more training in ways to do it and ways to work with the community. Uh, key metrics, again, I find this one challenging. We can say, yeah, we've had over 500 people in the program. Um, I think it's nice, but I don't know if it's proof that we're working or not. Um, the resources that we required early on might be a Zoom room um, and a place to host a website and to share emails with other people. Um, and then the contributors in our case might have been mentors and the experts who um, give talks and who consult with people when they're going through their journey. Uh, now, in contributors, I've mentioned two here, mentors and experts, you might have two, you might have three, you might have one, it might be fewer. 
And then moving sideways from that, contributor channels. That question suddenly becomes, okay, but how do they engage? So for my mentors, it might be that we emailed them and we said, hey, you're our good friend. Can you help us with this exciting new program we're launching? Um, or for the experts, it might be the same. Um, so it might be email, it might be Slack. It might be that I met them at a conference and invited them to join. Your contributors might be completely different. It might be that they join via GitHub. It might be, again, you've recruited them at conferences. Um, maybe they are your PhD students that you're working with or something else like that. There's many scenarios. Um, and then there's user profiles and user channels. Uh, so these are all different types of people that you're working with. Um, but the difference between a user and a contributor uh, is that a user um, may consume what you're doing and they may not necessarily give back. Um, that's not a bad thing when we're working openly. It's an assumption that people will be taking what you're doing and working with it. Um, so this works much the same way as the contributor profiles and channels. Uh, so in um, the case of OLS, if I'm applying OLS to this, then the user profiles might be the mentees who are receiving the training and the way that we hear about them um, is probably that we've been working to disseminate on social media and email groups. Um, and then looking at all that, then you might say, is there a unique value proposition? Is there a reason that people will come to you and look at your project uh, beyond anything else? Um, I think this one sometimes might tie into concepts like scientific or research novelty, and I'm not always convinced that novelty is necessary. Um, <laughs> I think sometimes doing something similar, but having multiple groups doing that and providing redundancy is great. So if you're stuck on the unique value proposition, I also wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, and so if you open the slide deck, because we have links to all the slides, then you can actually see it walking, walking you through as well. So you don't have to memorize what I've just been saying. But here's some descriptors that you can re reference when you're working on this on your own. Um, and there's also a walkthrough. Um, again, I tend to just go through the whole slide on itself. But if you want to walk through later when you're trying to think about how to fill this out and you need any additional um, advice or thoughts, then um, go through the slides. We also have an example at the very end, which looks at contributorship badges for science. Um, so this is looking at the problem where lack of recognition um, of things mean that people like some people papers are meaningful and other people in other scenarios, papers aren't meaningful for the for different academics. Um, and this solution looks at award, awarding badges to authors on academic papers based on their contributions. Um, I would argue the credit system would also be a nice uh, solution here. That doesn't mean that this one isn't good. Um, and then the metrics they have here to um, explore that is badges uh, awarded and number of pu publishers who actually embrace the system. Uh, the resources that they've noticed here are um, a server, um, at software development and buy-in from publishers and orchids. Um, so you can have a look through, see if any of these make sense to you and how you might apply it to your project. Uh, I know the first time I did this on my own, I found it was a really useful thinking point, not only because um, it like it specifically prompts you to think about and write all of these things, but there were things that I'd never thought about before. Um, and if you get stuck, this is a great place to go and speak to your mentor as well and say, hey, I, for the life of me, I could not figure out what I was supposed to put in the user channels box. And they'll be like, don't worry, we still love you. What about X? And they're usually very good at helping you think through this because they're not standing there in the weeds with you. Um, but they do have experience working as open practitioners. Um, so if you haven't heard the concept minimal viable product in the past, it's, it's a useful one to think about. Again, this is coming from the lean and agile business uh, scenario, but it applies in many different places. Um, and the idea is that you make something that works, that is complete, even if it doesn't have all of the features that you want. And then you build, build on it from there um, and that you iterate, but always in complete chunks. And this is designed to help you think through making a minimum viable option um, because it's usually better to have a something that works that doesn't have all the features you want than have something that has 29 features, none of which are complete and it can't be used. Um, so one of our suggestions, have a go, 
when you get stuck, talk through it with your mentor. If you're still struggling to find time to do this, work through it with your mentor at your next call. And I think that's everything it is. So let's do the stop share button. All righty, questions, my friends. Virginia. Yes, I, I have a question. Do you need to maybe revise these things once the project is already going? How oh, often yeah. are you required or you recommend to do it? No, I think this sort of depends on the activity. Um, so if your project's pretty quiet, then not a lot will have changed. So I wouldn't say review it every three three months or six months or anything like that. Um, it's sort of like the more dedicated resources you can put towards it, the more that's changed. Um, and I would sort of do that if you recognize that a lot has changed. You might want to say, okay, I've achieved X. And maybe I want to think through my next steps of my vision for the future. Um, but I think the next presentation is, we also, we talk in a bit about project road mapping, um, which we'll talk about looking longer into the future. And you might identify that when you get to goal X, that's when you'd want to revisit something like the open canvas as a thinking tool. Um, any other questions? Okie dokie. Um, you can always add other questions in the Etherpad. We'll scan through and try and add answers. Um, in the meantime, I think we're up to a next breakout room. Uma, do you want to take us away? Yes, sure. You Thank you for that. Uh, here it comes the second breakout rooms for this uh, code call. And uh, it's going to be a big one. Here you articulate your big idea, share your vision and dream that you want to achieve by working open. And uh, also uh, you can add uh, the breakout, uh, the project mission uh, and or vision below uh, so that uh, everyone can see it. And it's going to be for five minutes and uh, two people per room. Berenice, make the rooms. Yeah, the rooms are ready, I open them. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just put, you put, in paste the um and the instructions into the chat before ah too late? <laughs> I can broadcast them. Thank you. Ah no, you cannot. You can. Ah, whatever. Too much text. Yeah, articulate your big idea. Maybe um, just broadcast a reminder that the instructions are on line X. Yeah. Instructions are on line X. And Diana needs Daniel. Do you? Okay. So Nils and Diana, do you need them? Right. Um, let's move to the next topic, which is about road mapping. Uh, so road mapping for open project. If you have any questions or any notes or any feedbacks, please do them starting on line 285 on the Etherpads. And so a road mapping for open projects, again, it's come from the open leadership framework from Mozilla. So where the idea of, again, open leaders design, build and empower their project in communities for understanding, sharing and participations and inclusions. Um, and with the idea of why do we need a roadmap? So if you have a new project, it's important to outline and plan the work ahead. It's not only for a new project, for any project, it's usually good to plan, outline and plan with the work ahead and share that plans with potential contributors to make them aware of what's going on. And a roadmap is a text document that summarizes your project visions, 
included timeline for the tasks. So that helps identifying where you are now, how to you want to reach the, the end goals of your project. What are the, the different steps you will take to go in the, to reach these goals? And what, is there any dependencies between the different tasks to achieve that? So, and it's helped you also to schedule the work. So to think ahead about that and schedule the work, especially if there is dependency between the different tasks, track the goals and share with anyone that who, who might contribute to the project. So it's good for you, but it's also good for the people to feel welcome and contribute to your project. So what is usually in the roadmap? So the first step is usually having your project summary and welcome. So um, it, the way to welcome an area and visitor to your project. So it's important, it helps to uh, understand why, where are they? So what is the aim of the project? What are the goals? And, and maybe they have already linked directly to the roadmap and they didn't, they only heard about the project, about the roadmap. And they, their first contact with your project is the, the roadmap. So it's good to give a short introduction about the, the project there. And having the project summary first helps to give a clear focus when you write the rest of the roadmap. So having the project summary and welcome is really the first things you should have in a roadmap. The second text to want to have in a roadmap is how to get involved. So how do you want new contributor to jump? So the new contributor especially may want to jump right away to your project and start contributing. So you need to try to point to part of the project where they can immediately work on. So maybe it's um, it could be the newcomer friendly uh, issues that the people you can easily uh, 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 contribute to. That can be uh, a nice way to get familiar with the project. It can be um, more complex issues, but also documentation that they should check out before starting contributing to your project. So that is a two part that you really need to have clearly written in a roadmap. And the, four, the third and most important thing that you have in a roadmap is a timeline. And the start of the, it's really the start of the roadmap for so the thing that helps you to organize the tasks to complete your project around what we could call milestones. And that map also what you are working on, on and where it is going to be next. So that is like a ladder that can help you uh, achieving the goals on the top of the ladder, the goals of your project. And so in the timeline is organized in milestones. So there are a significant turning point or event that will move your project forward. It can be status goal. So maybe you want to have a release or a manual um, MVP, so minimum uh, prior product or something. It can be an event or a date. Maybe if you have an hackathon planned or, or something you want to do within the hackathon or you have a, a date, a deadline for a release or a submission or something. And it's also good in the milestone to have a time frame, different time frames. Short. So what can you plan to achieve within the next, I don't know, week, month, then a bit more medium and more long terms. But that also depends on, I mean, the time, the times for short, medium, and long term depend definitely on your project. For a really a simple project, the it could be to, we could take it to talk in weeks. If you have a really long, it could be months or years depends really on, on the project. And what is important is to pick usually one to three milestones for your timeline to build your timeline and build your timeline based on these uh, milestones. And within the milestones, you will have to list some tasks to complete. So when you say, okay, to achieve these milestones, we need to act to make this, 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 this task. And for each of the tasks, and to make it easy for contributors, you need to explicitly say what needs to be done for these tasks, what what will be the success of a task look like. So what do you do? What what does success look like for these tasks? Uh, pointing to how to get started for these tasks. So uh, is there any issue describing this task, or is it uh, documentation that is needed, or something else? 
And why is this task important to reinforce the visions of your project? Uh, so it refers to vision project. And how to store the roadmap? Um, there is different way of storing it. So you can store it in a separate files within your folder of your project. So a roadmap.md, for example, that is what uh, Open Discovery does. It can be directly in the readme file of your project. So we uh, this file, readme file, we discuss that in the week four, so in two weeks, that will be the one of the focus of the of the next um quad code. Um, you can it can be in an issue. So for example, um early, early like years ago, when we started what was called at this time open life science, and we were up um uh, get the first uh, application, we created an issue for the road, uh, roadmap for out um, application for open life science. So we can find still this issue is definitely close, hopefully. Um, but it's uh, that was our initial roadmap. Um, and you can also yeah, use the project the like the Kaban style boards tab either on GitHub or something, but something you can share with people. That is, it's um, it's it can be open for others. So for example, uh, peer project science use that, like on gas physics also use that. So there is different way of doing that. GitHub, uh, in terms of the project or issue, uh, we will cover that uh, GitHub more generally speaking in the week five uh, skill, up, skill, skill up call. So it's not a mandatory one. It's up to you. You can join if you want to get more a uh, short introduction to GitHub. And now to create your, the roadmap. So there is different steps. So the first things to do is to write your project mission and summary. So with your project name, uh, a short version, a shorter version of your project description uh, that you can have in the readme, or you can use your vision statement that you, you are supposed to start to write now. Uh, the best is after to that to pick uh, one, to, one to three milestones, list the task for the different milestones with a short description of the tasks and how to complete that um, and explain why you need to, you are doing these tasks. Let people know how they can get involved, post your roadmap or with your project and update open your roadmap. That is something it's easy to forget to obtain, update your roadmap. Uh, so come back regularly every six months, every, I don't know, regularly. It's up to you, up to your project, depends on your community about uh, and your project. And now that is one of the, of the assignment that you will get is you can create a roadmap, start creating a roadmap for your project and share for feedbacks. And I think that's all on my side. I will just stop sharing. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself or ask online one. Oh, sorry, I cannot. Two nine zero. I cannot read late numbers anymore. Sounds good. No questions. I, I, I feel it was a bit rushed. So sorry for that if it's a bit rushed. But all the slides. Everything is available from the part. It will stay live after the call and will also be linked on the website if you want to. And you can also ask questions on Slack later if you have any questions later. Thank you, Berenice. Uh, so folks, I'll leave the floor open for questions for a moment or two more. All right, I presume that Berenice's presentation was so perfectly crystal clear that there was just literally not a single thing that needed to be asked. Thank you, Berenice. <laughs> um, so we are remarkably on time. I am oddly pleased about this. Uh, so folks, um, we have a few minutes to wrap up, but uh, I will also hang around on the line for a few minutes after if anyone has any other questions or anything like that. Um, so just a few quick reminders. If you're following along on the Etherpad, then um, 
Line 298, uh, remind, make sure you're on our CIVI mailing list. So if you got an email telling you there's a cohort call today, then you're on that list. If you didn't, check your spam. If you still can't find it, let us know. Uh, there's a Google Calendar that you can add to your own calendar. Um, and there's also a Slack channel. We recommend joining them all. Uh, we do post reminders and discussion points and things like that in the Slack channel, and you're all encouraged to participate. Um, it's always very serious and important. I'm lying. I'm lying. I, I am very good at talking nonsense about cats. Um, we have assignments uh, that you can do or not do. We know that sometimes it feels like the assignment load can be a bit heavy. So if you if you do nothing else, do the open canvas. If you have a bit more time, do that roadmap. If you have more time, look at line 302 on this etherpad. Um, where you can open an issue on the RLS8 repo. I actually really recommend that one because it helps you track all of the assignments that we come, for, come through from later weeks um, and create a GitHub account. Um, there's quite a few. I don't think it'll be terribly exciting if I just read off the screen, uh, but take a look at those assignments on the Etherpad. Um, do what you can. If you can't meet up with your mentor, discuss that they can help you prioritize or maybe you can even sit with them and work through some of these exercises. Um, and there's also a couple of nice ones. So there's a reflection on your role as a mentee, line 309. Um, so this is thinking about good ways to work with your mentor and ways that you can make it easier for them to work with you. Um, ah, I see no, someone has noted that the roadmap link is dead on line 313. We'll take a look at that. I think that there's an issue... Um, this was the Mozilla one, and I think they've changed what, what, what they're maintaining or something like that. Um, so we'll have to speak with Mozilla and double check if we can find the correct. It's thing. updated. I it's updated. put the new link. Yeah. You're the best. Um, and the final thing, cohort names. Uh, so we have had names for most of our earlier cohorts. They've been sometimes obvious names. Uh, can you guess when the masked cohort happened? Uh, we had not long after the Mars lander, we had one cohort called Perseverance, we had another one called Hope. What would you like your cohort to be called? Um, we have a link. The link is on line 314 and I'll pop it in the chat as well. So in, in that link you can propose names and you can vote on the names that other people have suggested and we'll try and loop back to this if we see any obvious uh, really popular ones then um, we will have a naming party and we will celebrate with the new name for OLS 8, Open Seeds 8. Um, I think that's everything. We've got four minutes. The last thing I'll ask for you is before you disappear for today, um, at the very bottom of the etherpad, we have um, lines 317 and downwards, feedback questions. Just tell us what worked, what didn't work, was there anything that surprised you or that you would change? Um, because this helps us iterate and improve ourselves in the future. Um, and I can see a couple of people have already put, what would you change? Um, yeah, feel free to add some more and have a beautiful day, morning, evening, afternoon, night as works for you. And we will see you at the next call. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.